back to my channel. My name is Danielle and I'm the owner and creator of The Eighth Salt. It is my handmade small business where I make scrunchies and keychains. I also sell hair claws and makeup hair clips and hair accessory type products. In today's video, I'll be taking you guys along with me to one of my markets this weekend. I will be filming my setup and seeing if I can get any footage of the market and the other stalls that will be there on the day. And we'll also be packing for that market as well. This particular market, it's one of the first markets established in Sydney. So it's one of our longest and oldest markets and one of our most well-known markets because of that as well. It's a very large market with about, it holds up to 220 stalls and it's a regular market which is held two to three times per month. The market has four sections, a new artisan section which is held under a tunnel and it has two other sections for other retail and vintage clothing and the fourth section is for the hot food. We will be in the new artisan section which is held in the tunnel and where we don't need to set up a gazebo and that is always a plus for me because I attend and trade at markets on my own so not having to set up a gazebo is one less thing I have to carry and manage throughout the day. So we will be in that section along with all the other artisans to be able to trade in the tunnel it is by approval only and I applied and got approved to trade in the tunnel last year in March and I have only ever traded in the tunnel section when I have been at that market. I traded at that market more so last year because I have a regular Saturday market which I attend every week so it's a rare opportunity for me to be able to trade at this particular market at the moment so I'm glad to be able to take you guys along with me to, um, to our market tomorrow. But first we need to pack for our market. We will be packing our winter scrunchies which we made in a previous market prep vlog and swapping out our well, some of our summer range for those winter um, scrunchies. We'll also be packing our hair clips that we prepped for the market as well and getting those all sorted and ready for tomorrow and packed in the car. So I will see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning. The market starts at 8, 9 a.m. So I'll be getting there around 6, 6.30 for our setup because it is a very large market. There are a lot of storeholders that need to be bumped in to set up their stalls. So I'll be arriving as early as I can for that. But first, we need to pack for the market. So let's get into that. just swapped out all the summer ones for the winter ones that we made 
um, and then put some floral summer ones in this smaller basket in case people still wanted some um, color for the winter. So that's these done and then we're going to get sorting the extra ones. some of the extra large floors from here and then replace them with our winters. That is most of our market stock packed and ready to go for tomorrow. I have packed for our full display, well our full display now, which is this medium pegboard and two larger pegboards, which are our main ones for our Excel scrunchies. I used to have four pegboards, including this smaller one here, which I now use as my utilities pegboard. So I've reduced our market display down to the three pegboards, which is still more than enough. I usually only have our full display for the larger seasonal markets. I have a, another container like these ones with all our market utilities. So the rest of our market bags and our hooks for the pegboards and our tablecloths and a few things like that, which I need to still grab out of this room here along with our other pegboards, my chair and trolley, which I will be needing for tomorrow's market. I've gone ahead and sorted through the scrunchie baskets off camera. They didn't really need topping up, so I just fixed them up and rearranged them as they got a little messy from last week's market. So there's four of the large ones there and then four of the smaller ones here as well. So they're all ready to go. But I need to get these downstairs and packed into the car. And I'll see you guys tomorrow morning for the market setup.
forgetting my tripod um, I ended up forgetting my tripod so I wasn't able to film my setup for you all which I was very disappointed at when I realized when I got to the market and started unpacking my car um, I had planned on filming my setup for you all but unfortunately I wasn't able to do that but I did get some, I guess, manual time-lapse videos for you all of the market as the other storeholders were setting up and as the market was coming together. Um, I took some every about half an hour interval and I will time or have time stamp them for you all so you can see what the market looked like throughout the morning as all the storeholders were setting up. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to get any clips of myself setting up my store because I didn't have my tripod but I hope you guys enjoyed those clips of the rest of the market setting up and what it looked like throughout the morning I was also able to get some clips of for you all of the other artisans that were trading at the market I only went around and filmed the artisans that were in the tunnel section, which I, which was the section that I was trading in. The market extends um, a lot further than that section. There are three other sections beyond the tunnel. As I mentioned earlier in the video, there's a hot food section, a, another outdoor retail section under gazebo, and a vintage clothing section also outdoor under gazebo as well. So the market is a very large market and what I filmed or the section I filmed in was only one of the four sections. I was also able to get some video footage of some other storeholders that were trading in the tunnel section. So if you're watching, thank you all for allowing me to film your handmade products and your stall. All the storeholders that I took a video of and featured, they are all handmade artisan products, 
all their products are handmade by the storeholder themselves and a lot of them featured Australian or Sydney architecture and um, motifs. I am also a handmade artisan so I like to support them as well because I understand and appreciate the time and effort that goes into handmade products. So they were the ones that we were able to capture and feature today. In terms of our display, you may have already seen in the time-lapse footage that I wasn't able to display our hair clips as I initially planned and mocked up in a previous video. Um, I had planned to display them on a separate pegboard, a third pegboard on their own alongside our extra large scrunchies with either keychains or more scrunchies displayed on the board as well however i wasn't able to do that and that was because when i finished packing for the market after filming the pack up and collected all the other items that i need from the other room such as my chair and other pegboards and bits and pieces I realized I didn't have a stand for that third pegboard. I actually have four of those pegboards, those two larger pegboards which I use for my main display and hold the extra large scrunchies. This third utilities pegboard which I use as well and then that fourth one which is our medium sized one which you guys saw me mocking up on. And I realized I only had three stands. One is used here and two for the larger main pegboards. So I wasn't able to use that third pegboard. And I ended up displaying the makeup hair clips on the scrunchie pegboard as well with our extra large scrunchies, which still worked out fine and still looked fine. However, it did mean I had to reduce the number of extra large scrunchies I was able to display to fit the makeup hair clips. And I initially intended to display all 10 patterns of the hair clips separately. However, to minimize space and to get as much on the board as possible, I ended up displaying two patterns per hook to get as much on the board as possible. It still looked fine. No one would have ever known that I had to change my display on the spot if they didn't know. So it worked out fine. And I was able to get most of the stock that I had packed on the display. So we made it work. However, for our next market, we will be aiming to have our full display with the makeup hair clips on a separate pegboard. In terms of the market itself and the trading, it was a good successful trading day. It was not as busy as usual. I have been there at times when it has been much busier. The first time I ever traded there was a very, very busy day and the aisles were full with patrons browsing, walking about and shopping. And I remember speaking to my neighboring um, storeholders who told me the same, that it was a very busy day at that particular time and that it is usually that busy. So although it was a successful day, I know it is and can get busier there at that particular market. That particular market, as I mentioned at the beginning of the vlog, it is one of our longest running markets in Sydney and is one of the first, if not the first markets to be held in Sydney and when you are there you do get a sense and a vibe of the heritage of that market. You may notice me talking a lot about vibes of markets because each particular market does have a vibe and this particular market you definitely get a sense of that when you are there whether you are a trader at that market or you are a patron shopping there. There is a sense of heritage, there is a sense of the long-standing history of that market and you definitely get that feeling and that vibe when you were there. So it was nice to be a part of that on the day and I hope some of that came across to you all with the footage because that market is a very celebrated market in the particular area where it is held. 
But that is the end of today's video. Thank you all for coming along with me to the market and I hope you enjoyed the footage that I was able to get. Our next video, I'll be taking you guys along with me to another market. It will be a two-day market running over Saturday and Sunday. And I will definitely make sure to bring my tripod so I can get some footage of me setting up my stall. Um, it is an indoor market, so I will also not need my gazebo. It's held in a converted uh, warehouse, so it's very new, very modern. We will definitely be getting some footage of that market. So make sure to like and subscribe to my channel so you get a notification for when I upload that video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs>